Hello there, and welcome to the 36th episode of Strategic Zoomcast. You're looking at the Assault Engineer squad of Caesar. He is the Eastern player on Kolodny Firm. He's playing as the United States forces, and he's up against the devil in the West. The devil, this case, is Frost playing as the OKW. This game was simply titled, Why I Play Company of Heroes 2 in the replay section of KOTU.org. And it looks likely to be one hell of a game. It apparently builds in such an aggressive way that you're left thinking, this game surely got to end soon. And then it never bloody ends. It just continues to rage hard until you see a climactic ending that will leave you gobsmacked. And I always like to build hype in the early stages of a game. And you may be thinking, this bloody caster always seems to be casting the best game ever in inverted commas. And you know what? It's because I wait and I, I scour replays. I attempt so many casts before I find a game that is worth your, worthy of your time and my effort. And then you will see a uh, strategic Zoomcast episode. It's called the AA... AEGG Guarantee, and I absolutely firmly believe that I've already attempted to cast four games this week, two 2v2s and two 1v1s within the December balance patch, and I've given up on all four of them in favour of this game. So if you are seeing this game today, or this morning likely on a Sunday, or this evening if you're an American on a Saturday, um, you can be guaranteed that you're in for a hell of a show. So uh, that's the hype portion out of the way, let's focus on what the players are doing. Caesar has gone... For, of course, Armour Company, the best commander the United States can possibly employ, in my mind. He's up against the OKW Frost, who uh, is calling himself Sir Z Zelaza, which I believe is Polish for Man of Steel. So there you go, you heard it here first. Stern Pioneers doing a lot of uh, pushing away there with their Sturm Gewehrs. As they prowl around the northern sector of this battlefield. In the south here we have the Assault Engineers about to be outmatched. Frost knows that these SMG grease guns are no match for the Car 98 rifles at long range. So he's just going to sandwich them and push them away accordingly. Riflemen take the munitions garrison. Possibly could have hoped to have t neutralized the munitions first in my mind, but they haven't been able to do so. We have the mortar out for Caesar. It's going to give him some great indirect fire. Listen to the flag as it uh, slowly lowers and then slowly raises. Rifleman doing some really good health damage. Here. Sorry, the first grenadiers doing good damage to the riflemen. Mortar comes plummeting down. There's a lot of destruction and debris to the flora there. Stone pioneers hope to close the distance, get those assault rifles into better scope. They lose a model for their troubles, but their first grenadiers help out in that regard and are more than enough to push the rifles away. This was not a cutoff, by the way. Because this victory point connected the territories. Elsewhere in the south, we've got a battle between these folks, Grenadiers, rear echelons. Riflemen are going to help to neutralize this and push away the folks, Grenadier menace very shortly with the assault grenade engineers with the M2 flamethrower upgrade. More than a match. Mortar was pushed away. Think about the American mortar has to get really close into this area in order to be effective because it's got such a low. Range. If you're wondering why my words take three seconds to come out at a time, I've been drinking whiskey this evening, and it's uh, it's made me in a good mood, but it uh, slurs my speech ever so slightly and makes me think about what I'm saying ever so slightly more. Closing the distance, Caesar's United States forces. Folks, Grenadiers are pushed away, and that's why we're watching a top 50 game from both sides here. The players understand the value of manpower economy. And they know to run away when they need to run away. 
Look at that beautiful Kolodny Firma matchup. We've got the red sector here. Got these salt engineers. What are they doing? They're currently putting a juicy, juicy mine up here, it would seem. Some kind of like screwing it into the ground. That's what that is there. What else can we see in the north? I do like to cast like this whilst we're in a lull in activity. It just gives you a nice perspective that you don't usually see. Stone Pioneers laying mines of their own. Mortar round goes up. Mortar round comes plummeting down. We're a bit too high for it, actually. There you go. It's really quite low down. It's about here. There you go. You can see it now. And now we're back to casting as usual. Now the lulling activity has finished. Two shoe mines are watching over this cutoff. Assault. Engineers close the distance, getting to close quarter combat territory, but they're burning for their troubles. Could actually get wiped if they stay in that engagement. They are forced away, though, the foot. First Grenadiers by that captain. Assault engineers are not in the capping circle there. Just barely teetering outside of it. Surely they're going to see that shortly. No, they're not. There you go. Now they have. Too late. Who's going to get in the garrison first? It is the Assault Engineers. Stone Pioneers pushed away. I Meaning the Assault Engineers may be able to resume capping of that sector. Captain blows both mines up now down to two models. You can see that because it's the captain's units, his henchmen, that are crawling away in misery. These riflemen are pushing their way into the centre, trying to get rid of the first grenadiers. Do we have any upgrades yet? No, we do not for the riflemen. They are vanilla rifles as the, we speak. We have no ambulance quite yet, so we've got a lot of low health squads on the field. Look at everything. It's all low health, which might mean squad wipes in the near future for Caesar, if he's not careful. Oh, squad wipe on that might on that uh, unit there. That was a rifleman that died. That is deeply troubling. However, now we have the M15A1 Stuart out. M5A1. On the field, the light tank is going to be a menace. ISG comes thundering down. Could have been another squad wipe there. Stern Pioneer loses a model to the Stuart. Do we have the Raketten on the field? Yes, we do. Misses, however. Stuart pushing north. Continuing to take shots at the Stern Pioneer. ISG has pushed away this assault. Engineer elsewhere in the north. We've got this rear echelon about to detonate a mine. Keep an eye on that. There you go. Loses two models accordingly. Stewart's putting great pressure down on this MG34. So we have such an interesting composition right now for both players. A lot of parity. Raketenwerfer gets a shot. Will it get the follow-up shot? No, it will not. A lull in activity. Let's go take to the skies and survey the battlefield. Looks like the Stuart there is uh, going to reverse away to this sector to get some repairs, most likely. Some interesting activity in the south here. Looks like... No, it is seemingly in the north right now, the, ter the, the interesting activity. My bad, it was the MG34 pushing away the rear echelons. Activity has been resumed. Good thing about casting so many games as I have is you get a really good feel for when the game is just a lull. When all the units are back at base. I've been watching a lot of Overwatch today, competitive Overwatch. And um, from what I've seen, it's similar for those guys. They get to show replays when there's been a squad, a team wipe, for example. Riflemen against Fudge Grenadiers, both. Well, the Riflemen are a negative cover. The Fudge Grenadiers are actually in a rare patch of uh, neutral cover there on that green grass. So they should be winning this, and it looks like they are. However, there's a fresh rifle to tag team in for the weakened rifle. Stuart with two kills so far, but a lot of health damage done. 
We've seen something die here, it seems. Could it have been an, a sneaky shoe mine? Possibly a bit of work from the ISG, which is now up to six kills in total. That was a rifle that died there that we missed on camera. The infrared search heart life. Um, search light is on the field. Rifleman capping. However, the first grenadiers are ready for them. Rifleman jumped behind this cover that was planted by the OKW earlier on. Stuart doesn't feel like he wants to compete right now. He's been pushed away by the Raketan. Elsewhere. Assault engineers possibly about to die to that stern pioneer squad. And yes, they do indeed die. Let's check out the graphs so far. Army value. Looks like Caesar pushed ahead. It's about the nine minute mark there. Rear echelons pushing in to push away the Raketenwerfer. I often speak about pushing in my cast and... It is a game of ebb and flow. Resistance and force. And the force being applied by these first grenadiers. We do have the the BARs and bazookas, the weapon rack unlock. However, there's not many units to put them on right now. Caesar's looking low. The captain's died. A rifleman has died. There's two MG34s. This Stuart's got a lot of work to do to try and level things out. A capture point is under attack. Another shoe mine coming up here. This is it. Rifles going south to capture that territory. Stuart being devilish in its constant pressure being put upon these support weapons. Oh god, that's a wipe. Will he be able to get the squad wipe? Raketenwerfer opens up. Stuart pushed away. Mortar found out by this stern pioneer. Cancelled that mine in favour of, of attacking that mortar. Let's watch the victory point situation. It's very level. What a great game we're watching. I knew it would be. Stern pioneer could get wiped here. Needs to be careful. Needs to be very careful. Retreat has been necessitated. Will the Stuart pursue? Yes, it will. The Stuart's going in. It's reversing along that road, getting the bonus speed. It's continually attacking. It halts to get the better accuracy and then continues its pursuit. Where's the Raketenwerfer and all this? The Raketenwerfer is nowhere to be seen. Oh, God. The wipe has come in. Stuart's gotten the wipe. He's getting greedy, though, perhaps. He's going for the attack on the infrared searchlight. The Raketenwerfer is nearly there now. Are there any first grenadiers? No, there are, there are no Faust. Stuart gets the shot. No, there, here there is a Faust. It comes in. Gets the damage. And the Raketenwerfer follows up with the kill. Nice. Wombo combo from Frost. Oh, we've got some action. I was going to check out another graph. But there is indeed a little tiny bit of action there. But let's check out the points held. And watch how the battlefield has come and gone. And now we've drawn dead level. In the 14th minute of gameplay. But not almost. Ambulance. Here is on the field. Let's check out the interior of this thing. We've got uh, a dead body. And another stretcher ready to go. I mean, uh, this stretcher is going to lower onto the dead body. That's really, really unfortunate for him, you have to say. Sandbag. Setting up to protect that, well, to capture that munitions and then keep it. Ooh, Schwerpan's headquarters set up on the cutoff there. It's going to be watching over both of these vital points. Barred rifle, more than enough to uh, push away that folks' grenade. We now have access to the M10, not the prerequisite manpower though. Lieutenant, he's back teched to Lieutenant after getting the captain. That's an interesting choice. I mean, of course, he does have um, armor company, but what does he want from the lieutenant? It seems like he wanted the uh, 50 cal machine gun. Now available for action. Vet 2, Browning Automatic Rifle Squad. Putting a lot of damage down 
on the first grenadier, but the ISG will push that battle in his favour. There you go, we've got an Overwatch Doctrine selected for Frost. Very interesting. Just give you a chance to read that because we don't often see that commander in the game. See just how much that uh, Frost is able to see here. As she pings things in the fog of war for him, it allows him to see anything there. He sees that there's a fuel cache. You can see so much that he wouldn't be able to see otherwise. Such a great utility. Volley fire, volley fire engage for the rear echelons. ISG's going to make short work of them if they're going to stay there, though. Command level capabilities ready for deployment. Lieutenant and Vet 2 rifles spilling onto the battlefield. They're going to come up against this MG34, which has a great position. And we've got smoke deployed. Not where the MG34 is anymore, though. Looks like the MG34's days are numbered. We do have grenades teched, of course. There you go. There's going to be one dead MG34. How has that survived? Inconsistent there, must be said. Not going to be able to get the kill. The MG34 will take the weapon home with them. Rear echelons are clearly outclassed there. Not going to last there very for very long at all. Just enough to see that lieutenant, but not enough to keep the pressure down. Lieutenant thinks better of it and has now gone to capture this point. And just look how much sight lines the OKW have from that flare. Flare goes up and just shows everything on the battlefield. It really is like having map axe, that ability. I'm wondering if we'll see the Goliath in this game. It'd be very tasty to see that. God, he's so close to detonating that shoe mine, but wasn't to be. Stern Pioneer in an interesting engagement. Closes the distance, loses the model, and is pushed away. There you go. Ooh, would have been funny if that rifleman had gone over that mine. Would have detonated it and killed the, sh the uh, Stern Pioneer. Haha, <laughs> the first grenade now finally are able to build the sandbag they wanted to build earlier. ISG does enough damage to uh, push away the rifle, seemingly. Orbital Attention! Attention! darts on the field, they are teching to that MG34 that they'll hip fire upon their opponents. I really feel that Caesar's now waiting for the 105 bulldozer. He has access to it and he certainly looks like he wants to use it. And there you go. Heavy cav on the field. They do a lot of damage in this game, I feel. Oh, God. Rifle possibly going down. How can the Obelstar not get the kill here? They didn't seem to have the right uh, frame of mind at that particular point. ISG now with seven kills. Doing damn well. Oh, God. This first round is going to get pushed away. It's got a rude awakening. It's going to probably jump through the bushes. Surprise, bitch. Get out of there! They lose two, four models there in that big shot. That was brutal. Absolutely brutal. More shots coming in from that bulldozer. There's a second shot, not quite as lucky, but I'm sure there'll be follow-ups to come. MG34 reclaiming that munitions finally. He wants munitions because he wants to be able to, of course, use that 240mm howitzer barrage later on. Oh, double bar set up. Doing great damage to the Orbital Lawton, but the MG34 is here to save the day. Suppression goes down, and the MG34 of the Orbital Lawton will do a lot of DPS. Oh, what is this? All those are doing is getting shot by the raquette, and he's trying to get the kill on the searchlight, but wasn't able to do so. game we're having. G34 in perfect position. ISG shot shoots where the rear echelon were. This bulldozer's got to reverse all the way back to base to get some vital heals. A lot of American units in base right now. See a lot more of the game from this vertical perspective, it must be said. 
now time to return to our regular scheduled programming. The smoke canister dealing a lot of smoke. The MG34 is trying to reverse away. Rifleman pushing in. Will they get their grenade off? They throw it a hell of a distance. He must have been a quarterback when he was at high school. Jesus Christ, the damage done to that MG34. However, the suppression just about wins out. And now they're going to be in a battle against that suppressed squad. Will they win out? Looks like they might be. Elsewhere. Ooh, Stern Pioneers against the Rifleman. Will they lose out? The MG34 did win out in the north there, by the way. Must be said. Can't believe that Stern Pioneer survived. 105mm has been very slowly repaired there. I don't know why he doesn't jump out of the tank. There you go, he's jumped out now to get extra repairing. Under fire. Those, of that, those of us that have played Soviets quite a lot, that makes us feel like a model's just been lost, but it isn't the case. Ooh. The 54 ton precision weapon is on the field. You can see its hulking mass as it runs over our camera here. The Panthers going in. Stolen Raketenwerfer though. Oh, I know what happened with that Raketenwerfer. He went in to try and get the shots at the uh, bulldozer and was decrewed and captured as a result. He's retreating away. The hull gunner and the turret gunner are firing. Oh, but now we have the M10 Wolverine. Glances away harmlessly from the Panther, but does a bit of health damage regardless. Bulldozer misses against the Orbital, and that is unfortunate for him. We've got the Bazooka doing an excellent damage to the Panther. Another shot goes in. He reloads the round, gets the shot in. M10 could have pushed at that very moment, but decides not to. Raketenwerfer has been recaptured. Could get the kill, along with the Panzerfaust. Will it happen? This is its moment! Aha! The fuel cache took a beating. First from the M10, then from the Kettenwerfer. Block the shot. Hero fuel cache. What's this bulldozer doing? Maybe going in against the Schwer Panzer headquarters. There you go. Shot hits the log pile instead. It's the advantage of natural fortifications. M10 is ready to lick its wounds. Bulldozer. Not done too much damage, to be honest, against the Schwer quite yet. Maybe an anti-tank rifle grenade coming to keep this Panther out of action. Doesn't fancy it against the concerted arms fire of those Stern Pioneers. Panther is now on the prowl. It's pursuing the Bulldozer. It's going to get another shot in. It's going to break through that hedgerow. There you go. Crushes the hedgerow. About to get its fatalistic shot in. Kills the bulldozer. A medium tank was just lost. I'll swear in the centre. Battle of the MGs. MG34 versus the 50 cal. Had this MG34 taken out by the mortar. Panthers in really low health state. 50 cal was decrewed in the end. Looks like we've had another 50 cal in a really odd angle. Could have been flanked by it from the south there if you hadn't been careful. What's this? Dive, dive, dive from the M10s it seems. The Panther is in a weakened state. However, they're going to sustain a bit of damage from this um, Schwer if they're not careful. Main gun destroyed on the first shot. That is unfortunate. He's going in. He's getting shots in. Rear armor hit. Bad angles. From the cameraman there. Fire the cameraman. Panther's about to be taken out. Second M10's not necessary. That M10 survived. Will this M10 survive? No, the Raketenwerfer gets a freakish shot in from max range there and kills one M10. So one M10 for a Panther. A good trade in my books. If this M10 can get away, that is. Smoke goes out to try and allow this cap on the central victory point. You've got to keep an eye on these victory points. It's been a very concerted battle so far. And let's do a uh, midway game. Tail of the tape. In one moment, once we've seen this per engagement out.
There you go, there's our moment. There's points held. There's army value. And there are there's the overview. It's a very even game so far. Frost done more damage, but uh, Seize has been extremely competitive. MVP for Seize, for Frost so far is the uh, Rakatenwerfer, which is a pretty good thing for Caesar, I guess. It means he's had a lot of tanks, but uh, two of them have been destroyed. There's his only surviving model. It's the open top tank destroyer, the M10. Postgrenadier continuing to put pressure on this mortar. Oh, Obelstorton could be dying here. He's going to pursue. He's going to go for the kill. Will he get it, Caesar? Yes, he will. And that high priority vetted target, he gets the kill on the Obelstorton. I really feel like Caesar is in the ascendancy. Vanilla Fudge Grenadiers have had to have been built for Frost. The ISG's been a constant menace, it must be said. Stolen Browning Automatic on that Stern Pioneer. Cloak Rocket and lies in wait. Church finally goes down. No body was inside at the time. Ooh, ISG continuing to do the damage. This mortar, by the way, if you're wondering, has nine kills, so not too bad. But not exactly amazing. Second bulldozer is on the field. M10 pushing north. Possibly going to go for the crushing of the stern pioneers. Second bulldozer. Will it be more effective than the first? So the first didn't do too badly. It just went in a bit too hard against that Schwer. Oh, ho, ho, nice four kickers go up, indicating four models have died. So that's pretty much what happened for the first bulldozer, to be honest. So maybe he's going to repeat the first bulldozer's life. On the shot accuracy isn't as great. What is this bulldozer doing? He's going too deep, man. Too deep. Third shot misses. Oh, well, that's what he was going for. It is death from above. The 240 millimeter. Howard Sabarage is going to thunder down from above. There's the first shell. Hits the Rakatenwerfer. RNG bullshit rains from the skies. Second shell comes thundering down. Rakatenwerfer has been recruited. Takes out the bulldozer. That's really great from Frost. Ballsy moves. Third shell doesn't do too much. I think this MG34 has got to be a bit scared though. Where's it going to hit? Where's it going to hit? Oh! <laughs> Takes out his own rifle squad. Drops two bars. Merry Christmas, Frost. RNG bullshit for the win. Rakenver for in a great position to attack this Wolverine. Ooh, good rear shots go in. Could have been a wipe there if the Rakenver had properly left itself there. Second Panther's out. So very much repeating uh, past mistakes or past good decisions that uh, should have gone right but went wrong for reasons outside their control. Second bulldozer was lost, of course. Panther on the prowl looking for the M10, but it's no longer there. Let's check out the MV un MVP unit for Caesar's far. It is, of course, the Rifleman. Lost one of them. Let's check out what he's lost in total. One Captain, one Rifleman, two Assault Engineers. Let's check out Frost. He's lost a Stern Pioneer, a Albusel Darton, 
two Foch Grenadiers and had two Raketans decrewed. M10 ready for war, ready for battle. I'm not sure it wants to compete against the Panther in a frontal armor engagement though. I know who wins that bout. What a crazy game we've had so far. We're now at the 30 minute mark. It's 238 victory points to 250. MG34 in an expert position there to thwart the advances of Caesar. Panther against the Bazooka and the M10. Raketenwerfer also tips the tide of battle in OKW's favour. Nice sandbag position in the centre there to watch over that victory point. Great positional play from Frost. Caesar also using their support weapons to some advantage. Second M10's had to be built. He's going to have to build an armada of those things to take out this panther. What's he waiting for there? That is really ill-advised, Caesar. What are you doing? That was a terrible anti-tank grenade unless you can get the kill. Shot goes in from the M10. He has to get there around the rear armor. The turret's tracking its target. Reverses as well to keep the angles. Needs to get around the rear armor. Will he get the shot in? Yes, he will. Rear armor found. Oh, God. The second M10 gets the kill. There you go, that's why he sacrificed that rifle, to get the anti-tank rifle grenade off, and I suppose it was worth the trade. One M10 and one rifle. That's three... Well, let's do the maths. Hang on a second. So that's 300 manpower and 90 fuel. The rifleman squad itself is 280 manpower. So it's 580 manpower for something that costs OKW... 490 and 200 fuel. So I think it's about the fuel trade all in all. And I would advise that that was a good trade for the United States. Other than the fact that OKW are currently reclaiming the fuel from the husk. Which uh, they get a pretty penny. Points are down, to 300. down to 300 points now for Caesar. Both in the 200s go. Each army. 50 cal is going to get suppressed and pushed away, no doubt. United States are getting aggressive in the north. They only have one rifle squad at this current point. I'd advise they need to rebuild, but uh, got to focus on what's right for the entire the entire battle. And to be honest, he does need rifles in the long run, so I would advise him to rebuild the rifles at this point. Stern Pioneers getting pushed away. Barred up Stern Pioneers, it must be noted. M Thames ready to, to be aggressive. Will he register that uh, there is nothing protecting the loins of Frost's army right now. Incendio grenade goes in. Takes the rifleman out of cover. Pineapple grenade goes in. And destroys the health bars on those first grenades. And 10 against an MG34. Not doing that much damage. Doesn't have the weapons profile for it. Raquette and Verfa repositioning to the south. Orbital's a lot in the build for Frost. He's going to have the advantage there. He also now, by the way, has Sector Assault Stukas will automatically recon and attack enemy units in the designated area. It's a great ability. It searches for itself, finds its own targets. Ken Verfa does a 180 and has to retreat. There's a second one, though, that's reversing into view. This is really sneaky. He's tried this once before. He's clearly trying it again. Sneaky Raketon is prowling in enemy lines. Fighting position is upgrading. However, they really don't fancy it as the double grenade goes in. Bundle aid and incendiary. Oh, he took out the ambulance with the uh, raquette, and that's nice. M10 is going to go north. Try and crush some foes. That's a really bad profile in general. ISG with some great shots here. Kenvifer was thwarted, but got into safety with the weapon. Just about. 
has destroyed an emplacement. Lieutenant advances despite the fire. He throws a grenade behind the squad. Great usage of grenades by Caesar. Doesn't isn't able to get the kill though. And now loses that all-important fourth model and isn't able to capture the weapon. OKW have pushed really far into the north and have a great position set up. Third bulldozer on the field. Rakettenwerfer takes a shot in at the M10. This folks grenadier could be getting wiped. Rear Ashlands would be very lucky to get the kill there. Very rare if they did. They'd have to have BARs. Got a 50 cal waiting for anything that flushes out into that particular territory sector. That's the beauty of vaulting. Instant retreat by Frost, showing just why what makes him a top 50 level player. Let's check out the graphs. Very close in battle so far. And it's just shown by the units killed, units lost. It's neck and neck. As we, as we head into very familiar territory as the both combatants are about to draw level on victory points. Second ambulance is on the field right now. Oh! Nice work by the ISG. All those are uploading. It's uh, 50 cal. M10 and Bulldozer make an excellent pairing. I really do feel like Caesar's got to rebuild his uh, rifleman composition. I honestly do. He still only has the one rifle. Flares go up, showing exactly what he needs to see. In this kind of flower, four leaf clover shaped pattern due to the true sight. He's flanking from the south. There's a mine. There's a can of her waiting. Lieutenant. In Ura mode, charges straight in. Oh, bulldozer with a great shot. Will he get the kill on this stern pioneer? M10 goes in. There's a mine there. I need to be careful of. Panther is on the battlefield. M10 does good damage. ISG thunders in. Doesn't do any damage at all. Raketenwerf has been possibly stolen here. Lieutenant pushes in, but is suppressed by the MG34. Mine. Detonates. M10's now a sitting duck. Because the Foch Grenadiers are going to come in to possibly get a Faust in. Bazooka squad protecting against the Panther push. Foch Grenadiers push up. Do they recruit the Foch Grenadier or don't they? Is that, uh, the um, Raketenwerfer or don't they? M10's reversing away. Panther in pursuit. Big shot in. Second shot required. Isn't able to get it off. Decides against it. For better or for worse. I'm saying for worse. Two victory points have been in favour of the American for a sustained period now. MG34. Good pressure done, done to that uh, particular squad. ISG now to 22 kills. Veteran C4. So much when you get to Veteran C4. A capture point is under attack. G34. What is this mortar doing? YOLO mortar. Oh, that was really bad by Caesar. I don't know what he was doing at this point in time. He seems to have just lost all sense of himself. However, he did manage to get the flank off and a grenade off. Just, well, kind of. Lieutenant was able to get that point. A little bit of sloppy play in the centre there. Did not need to lose that M10. Uh, no, that was the bulldozer he lost, wasn't it? Find out in one moment. Yeah, it was the bulldozer he lost. M10s are amassing in the south. Possibly ready for the Panther to make itself exposed. The enemy is overrunning one of our oh, captures. this is perfect. So, strategic zoom cast territory sect territories. You can see the engagement in the south and the north at the same time. 
Panther's now down to 60% health. M10's pushing. They're going for it, ladies and gentlemen. Both shots ricochet, however. Frontal armor to the rescue to the Panther. This M10 at the, the arrow tips taking a proper beating. Need some big shots to go in against the Panther. There you go. One penetrates. And they get the kill with the Wombo combo there. Rear armor was found. This M10's got to reverse all the way home. He's going to get Faustus for his troubles. I think he'll survive, but it'll be close. Will he get the kill on the infrared? No, he doesn't want to lose the, the tank. Lost the gun crew somewhere. Looks like we lost 50 cals. It was this 50 cal has been wiped and stolen. Now giving Frost three 50 cals. That's right. Or a temporary tank advantage for Caesar, but that said tank is no good when there's no targets on the field. It's almost like the tanks have cancelled each other's other out in this game. If Caesar had been able to keep his 105mm bulldozer howitzer alive, he would have had a distinct advantage, but he, to be honest, he's been very careless with them. Orbital dot ready for the rear echelons. And they retreat, not having been shot at, just at the mere fear of the Orbital Sadat and what they bring. Look at the victory points. So let's keep an eye on these things. It's 106 to 227 right now, meaning we are entering bum-clenching territory very shortly. Flare goes up high into the sky. Comes back down. We have had... A rifle rebuilt, thank God. Orbital Dorton pushing deep into territories. There's just not enough rifle presence to stop this kind of thing happening. We have 90 fuel for Caesar. He's able to get another M10 should he wish it and get that uh, Armada on the go once more. 30 cal. In expert position. Able to suppress both these squads should he wished. 50 cal's had to be rebuilt. He clearly thinks he needs it in this VP battle. We're at 200 points. We're losing a capture Rear echelon pushed away. Debris flies into the sky there. Hits down. Where's it going to hit? Oh, it was out of bounds. Home run. Or for a six, depending on which uh, bat and ball based game your nationality favours. Rear Rushlons finished the job of the old Soldaten, who are back in base getting replenished. It costs a lot to do so. But Frost has manpower to spare. He's got a lot of fuel in the bank as well. Nice work done by the ISG and the Stern Pioneers, pushing two squads away. And Frost looks in a commanding position, despite uh, having less victory points. A capture point is being overrun. M10 is now the most valuable unit. <laughs> Eight kills, three deaths. Supply line just got cut off. And for Frost, we're currently looking at the Raketenwerfer still. Good shots in by the ISG. It's done nothing but that in this game. 28 kills. Very close to being Veteran C5. An MVP unit in my mind and not the statistics mine. First grenade here feels a wrath. Wrath of the uh, 50 kill and pushed away accordingly. A lull in activity while both, both armies reboot build their relevant forces. We're now having a Panzer Fear built. The Model J. Late war variant. I've actually been inside one of these things. If you want to see that for certain, here you go. I'll show you a picture of that. It's on my Facebook profile pictures from many moons ago. That's me inside a late war Panzer IV variant. A little bit fatter then. That was at Bovington Tank Museum. Fire, 
Panzer IV being attacked by the Bazooka by the M10. Really bad foray into the battlefield, however, the Rakenwerfer has been decrewed by the Orbital Dorton. That's about as much as he's going to be able to do. This MG34, sorry, stolen 50 cal has been a great saviour for Frost. Nice, mo uh, nice grenade went in. Wasn't able to do too much though. Stolen Raquette and Werfer has been recruited. That model went flying. Down to 100 points for Caesar now. God, he's going to drop quickly if he's not careful. Currently have a triple cap. He's de He's de capping the southern victory point though. It's now neutral. Which means he'll now be down to a slightly slower drip, drip, drip of those victory points away. But we've got pos solid positional play. Look at those overarching channels of sight. In the centre, we've also got sim a similar situation. It's only the south that Caesar can currently control. He's rebuilt his rifleman army. He doesn't have enough munitions, however, to get the... 240mm howitzer barrage off. It's going to take him a while to amass what he needs to do to get fully back into this battle in my mind. Uh, the battle isn't in my mind. Uh, I mean, in my mind as though it's my opinion. Vet 2 M10. Hero of the United States. Recipient of a Medal of Honor, no doubt. This mortar has climbed up to 13 kills. This iteration of said mortar, anyway. Destroys the uh, the flare there. And 10 comes into view. Rakenwerfer will get a shot off. He's going to have to get in here. Oh god, he's going to get two lots of suppression down at once from the MG34. Whoever hasn't seen them, I don't know why that is. What is that MG34 doing? It's allowing the Americans to win that northern engagement. They've been able to get around the sights there. Panzer Mark IV is in position. M10 will cause it problems though if it's not careful. So M G34 was recruited, but the Albus of Dorton could wreck utter havoc on retreat here. Look at that line of sight. Oh, could have destroyed Caesar's chance of winning. Got a second M10 on the field. Who's going to win here? I reckon it's going to be the M10s. They've got to double whammy of shells. Destroy the Panzer IV. It's reversing away as fast as it can. It's engaged combat blitz. But it won't be enough. That thing is a lump of twisted metal burning. Riflemen have to get back on the battlefield. They've got 45 victory points remaining. Caesar needs to make this work. He was going to try and take the MG34, but it was too late. What's this? Sector Assault is coming down. Stukas dive! And don't do much at all, to be honest. Don't know what that was about. They go strafing now and pinning, stopping the cap. He really didn't want that to happen. Oh, there you go. Really wants to get this northern victory point, but it's just not happening right now. All these resources for OKW is staying in the center. He's probably doing the wise thing there, just keep one victory point, I guess, but he's only got 106 himself. He has to watch out there. He's definitely got that northern victory point now. He's setting up by that tree. He's got the two M10s. Must be noticed that Frost doesn't have much, by the way, of tanks right now. Still got this... Um, Searchlight, second built in this game. Oh, good bit of smoke. He's been able to neutralize the central victory point. All the Soldaten rear their ugly and experienced heads into view, though. They have ample munitions, should they want to bundle nade this rifle. Probably won't need it, however. Grenade goes in. Could have done a bit more there. Rakettenwerfer was given up by Frost. A little bit of... Um, Bad play there, possibly. 
So now we've had Frost slip down to 93 victory points. Keep an eye on those top tickers, ladies and gents. This is going to be good. Stolen Raketten. And the Bazooka rear echelon waiting. Look at the range on that bloody ISG. It can launch all the way across the map. Foch Grenadiers throwing themselves into the south. M10s doing a lot of work against this Schwerpanzer. It should be noted, by the way, that there is no... Um, there's no mechanizer. He doesn't have option for the King Tiger. If this Schwer goes down before the Panther's out, he's done for. Needs to cancel it. There you go, he cancelled it and he's, he's now got a lot of fuel but nothing to spend it on. Two M10s though, um, really don't have a target right now unless they want to keep trying to attack these positions. They're being pushed away, possibly about to be fausted. Doesn't have the munitions for a Faust! Well, he just about got it before it reversed away. Fighting position, doing a lot of work. Those nades are going in. Trying to get the bundle nade off. Oh, he gets pinned just as the nade. Oh, he got pinned as the nade was getting thrown. That is unfortunate. He's about to cap the Northern Victory Point. 75 to 30. God, this is getting hype. This is getting good. This is getting exactly what we love. How many of heroes? Two. Four. Nice work. Raquette and Verfa turning about face. They're trying to get in on the M10. OKW, okay, you've got to start acting and acting fast because right now it looks like Caesar has Frost's number. He's doing everything right to keep these victory points in his favour. The fighting position seems... Oh, he's getting two of them in the south. That's going to solidify that position. Smoke has really helped out in the centre. Elsewhere, these folks are just throwing themselves forward. He's got to make some devilish plays and he's got to pl make them very shortly. Pinned Foch Grenadier. Neutral Foch Grenadier here with only two men in the squad. He's been able to recapture that central victory point, but it doesn't really matter because 52, sorry, 50 victory points will drop very quickly indeed. What a game we've seen. Look at this checkered landscape, which is pit hold. With the marks of destruction. It's a lunar moonscape right now. Well, lunar implies moon, but it's definitely celestial body-esque. It's been hit by many asteroids, and these uh, asteroids have been mostly the ISG. 34 kills, but so many, so many shots in this game. Look at the destruction it leveled. That, that, that is the radius of the ISG, right? And look how many shots it's had. It's just done so much work. There you go. There's a new one for you. He's got on the bulldozer. Just to add insult to injury. That's the perfect tool to use in this late game. He's got that northern position. He's got on this southern position. It doesn't look likely that Caesar can be beaten in my mind. Frost has got to do something really intelligent. He's gotten the mechanized out. He's going to have to uh, try and do something amazing. Just, just had a gun crew wiped out there. The Raquette and Verfus come into view. Big shots in on the M10. They can't take out this one. They are able to push out away both though. He flanks the MG. This is big from Frost. He's got the two Foch Grenadiers coming in. Nice stun grenade. M10 comes in for the crush. Probably a double Faust though. He's probably going to lose his life. There you go. He goes and he's destroyed. However, smoke grenade in the center. Rifleman trying to cap there. This is a very hyped situation. 20 victory. 18 victory points to 30. We've now had the, both weapons destroyed in the center. He's trying to take this central victory point now. Amazing from this big platoon of units in the north from OKW. Has Caesar lost too much? Fourth bulldozer in this game. Got a lot of work to do. Here come the Raketenwerfers though. He has taken that central victory point. 
The victory points are dropping. He needs to get into that central circle. Frost needs to rush in right now. Bulldozer's trying to crush him. Trying to bulldoze his hope and aspirations of staying in this game. But he's done it. He's gotten past the beer moth. And he's taken him out. And he's within the neutral victory point. It's ticking down. Three victory points remaining. And he neutralizes it right now. In the north, he's keeping it. He's got the, the 50 cal that is stolen. He's got... This folks grenadier, Caesar has 30. He's not losing any right now because it's one victory point to one victory point. And 10 eats a Faust. We've got the follow-up from the rifles and the, the rear echelon. But here come the Rakettenwerfers and the Orbosaldon in the south. It looks like the fighting positions are winning out. Smoke grenade goes in. It smokes out that position. Rifles pop out of suppression. The other rifle swings in from the south. M10 is still alive. Three victory points remaining. Don't forget, 24 remaining for the United States player, Caesar. This rifleman, Vet 3 versus the Vet 5, folks, Grenadier. He needs to throw a grenade. The M10, of course, dies. Orbital Dotton getting attacked. He's got enough for smoke. He's got enough for grenades. Oh, but he's been destroyed by this folks, Grenadier. Is that the end of Caesar? Is that his demise? He wasn't able to make it work in the north. I really felt he could if it one grenade away from salvation there. 15 victory points ticking down. There's the grenades we wanted to see. Possibly a little bit too li little too late there. 12 victory points remaining. Oh, this rifleman possibly about to die in a platoon-esque death. He cowers and runs away in a defensive gesticulation of terror. Assault engineers possibly in a futile state. Look at this low health. MG34. It's a hero unit, is it? Headshots that assault engineer. He recruits. The 50 cal. But it's probably too much. Three victory points here apiece. Stone Pioneers rush forward. They lay a mine in desperation. Two victory points remaining. 50 cal on fire. The Terminator. And he's out. GG is called by Frost. And I say that was a game for the ages. What a great game that truly was. I will leave the, um, the match up a little bit right now. As we just um, survey the battlefield. So if you, if you want to finish watching, you can do that right now. Um, thank you for watching and goodbye. I'm going to talk for a little while longer, um, just so we leave a little bit of suspense for any of our viewers. And in fact, what I'll do instead is just leave us on this beautiful, beautiful battle. Because it was truly wonderful. I want to find a good... Screenshot. That looks pretty good to me. We'll go with that. So thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to put a little bit of music on now and uh, mute myself and uh, make a little bit of a no-spoiler screen. So thank you for watching and goodbye.